changed the sub theme of my message for this morning. Amen. Glory to God. I was going to say dress for the evil day, but I just changed it. Amen. Everything is going to be all right. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. Hallelujah. It's on the screen. Let's all just look up here. Amen. So we'll be on one accord. Hey! Because some of y'all got the NIV, some of y'all got the New King James, some of y'all got the, the Gideon version. Amen. Come on. Amen. Y'all ready? Amen. One, two, three. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Hallelujah. 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 And may the Lord, our great God, bless the reading, hearing, and now the preaching of his holy word. Send your word, Father, right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to his wonderful name. Job was minding his own business. All right. Job was giving praise and worshiping his God, Jehovah God, the God of the Bible, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Job, the Bible said, was blameless and upright. He feared God and he eschewed or that is shunned evil. But the devil was doing a drive-by. And he didn't like what he saw. So he went straight to the throne of glory. Yeah, that's right. The devil ain't in hell. Amen. Stop preaching that lie. Amen. The devil is not in hell. The devil is loose and foot loose and fancy free. But he's under God's control. But he crashed heaven's call meeting. And God said, what's up devil? How can I help you today? The devil said, I'm just chilling. God said, well, have you tried my servant Job? He's blameless and upright. He fears me and he shuns you. Go ahead. Preach it now. Now that just, that, that just got the devil just that much more high. Let me have at him. Give me a day with him. And I'll make you curse him. He'll curse you to your face. The Lord said, all that he has is in your power. But you can't touch his life. And so while Job was busy, Worshiping and praising God, minding his own business, praying for his children, standing in the gap, 
interceding for them, offering sacrifices for their sins, lest they may have blasphemed or, or done anything evil in the sight of God, the bottom fell out. In one day, Job lost everything. Everything he had. Everything he worked hard for. Everything he had sacrificed. Y'all not talking to me this morning. Everything he sacrificed for. Everything he planned for. Everything God had blessed him with. He was grateful for it. He was appreciative of it. He gave God the praise and the thanks for it. He was not like the nine, glory to God, that were healed by Jesus, but didn't turn around to say thank you. He was like the one Samaritan, the Gentile that came back to give glory to God. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Job looks up, and all of a sudden, he's lost all his cattle. He's lost all of his sheep. He lost everything he had. He's losing servants. He's losing money. His personal stock market crashes. Then he looks up and all ten of his children are gone. My brothers and sisters, this was the evil day. I want you to turn to your name. And say, neighbor, neighbor, are you dressed, are you dressed for, the for the evil day? Are you dressed Come on. for the evil day? Yeah. See, God, we, we serve a loving heavenly Father. Yes, yes. He is so loving and merciful. That he thinks on us all the time. The Bible says God's thoughts toward you and me are innumerable. And that's on a daily basis. That just wasn't the day he blessed you with extra money. Oh, y'all not listening to me this morning. That wasn't the day that only the day that you found your significant other. But God thinks wonderful thoughts, beautiful thoughts, kind thoughts, merciful thoughts, gracious thoughts of you and me, innumerable continually, day after day, after day, after day. And that day will never cease. But there is a devil out there. And he ain't got nothing good to think or say about you and me. The devil cringed when he saw Job giving God glory. He cringed when he saw Job worshiping God. He cringed. It, was, it went down to the marrow of his nasty bones when he saw Job offering sacrifices for all ten of his children. Do you pray for all of your children? One by one and name by name? Whether they are near or far. That's right. That's right. You know you got to be 
careful with human nature. Out of sight, out of mind. Right, right. 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 In Ephesians 6 and 13, we have the call to withstand. Now in verses 10 through 12, we saw the call to stand. But in verse 13, there's a different kind of call here. It is the call to withstand. Our loving Heavenly Father is so merciful that he lets us know in advance to be ready. God will never let it catch you off guard. And even if he does, he knows you can handle it. Because he's got your back. Yes. He's with you. The psalmist said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Job may have been caught off guard, but Job was dressed for the evil day. Glory to God. <laughs> Job, after he had lost everything in one day. Did you hear that? He lost everything in one day. Not over the course of one year. Not over the course of one decade. You know, some folk lose stuff over a long period of time. You know, it's a little bit here and a little bit there. No, Joe lost everything. Ah, there go that word again, huh? He lost everything in one day. No other man in the history of time has ever suffered like Job, save the Lord Jesus Christ. Other than Jesus, Paul comes in a close second. <laughs> yeah, Paul, Paul comes in a real close second. But even Paul didn't suffer like Job. The Bible says, Job, after, after God released the devil to attack Job's body, the devil said, skin for skin, let me touch his flesh, and then he'll curse you. The Bible says, Job looked so hideous that to his three best friends, he was unrecognizable. A relative of mine, back when I was 17 years old, he also was 17 years old. Matter of fact, 
we were coming up on our 17th birthday. He was born two days after me, a relative of mine. He was drunk and got hit by a truck. And he was so physically, he hung on for a few days. But he was so physically marred that my mother warned me, don't go see him. Because she did not want me to have that last impression in my mind because she knew it would remain with me for the rest of my life. Because see, he was my cousin. We used to play together. We hung out together. We had sleepovers together. No funny stuff. I know. Even in our unsaved state back in that day, we had better sense than that. Hey, hey, all right. Amen. Job's three friends? Yeah, yeah, I heard he was sitting under the tree. You know what? We always hang out and fellowship. When they got over there, they... his friends even showed up. Job had a few words to say. And he performed an act of faith. He said, naked I came out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord has given and the Lord has taken away. Bless it! That's the same thing the psalmist said in Psalm 103. Yeah. Bless his holy name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I challenge you, Christian. Yes. I challenge you today in your personal evil day. You bless the Lord. Yes. 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 That's what separates the boys in Christ from the men in Christ. That's what separates the girls in Christ from the women in Christ. 
Can you bless the Lord as the psalmist said at all times? Can his praise continually be in your mouth? The psalmist said, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. The Bible says Job fell down and worshiped God. The Bible says when his wife came to him and said, Curse God and die. Man, you look horrible. You are not fit to live, Brother Joe. Just curse God and die. Job had a response. Job said, You talk like one of the Foolish women. Shall we take good at the hand of the Lord and not evil? There's a call to withstand. To withstand in the evil day. The word withstand in the Greek New Testament, Ephesians 6.13, it is the word anthistemai, anthistemai, from which we compare our English word antihistamine. It's a compound word. Anti, which means against, and histamine, which means to cause, to stand. The verb suggests vigorously opposing, bravely resisting, standing face to face against the adversary, standing your ground. And this to me, just as an antihistamine puts a block on histamine, antihistamines work by blocking the effects of histamine, the chemical responsible for many of the allergy symptoms one may experience. When histamine is released, it binds to special sites called receptors on cells in your nose and throat, causing them to swell and leak fluid. This results in inflammation, nasal congestion, runny nose, sneezing, itching, watery eyes, and other symptoms. Can I get a witness? Antihistamines block the effects of histamine by, quote, coating receptors, which prevents binding. Ooh, did you hear that? This, in turn, prevents nasal allergy symptoms. 
So thus, in the same way, spiritually, and destiny, the Greek word for which stand, tells us that with the authority and spiritual weapons we are given by God, particularly the armor of God, granted to us, we can withstand the evil forces of the day. The Apostle John wrote in his first epistle, he said, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Come on, I want you to say it with me. Say, you are of God, little children. You are God.
Christians will not endure sound doctrine. They don't want to hear it. They don't want nothing to do with it. They don't want no sound doctrine. You know what he said they're going to do? He says, after their own lusts, they shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They're going to try to say stuff like, uh, Pastor Pope, we just ousted you. We bringing in Brother Willie. He's going to be our new pastor. Because he tells us what we want to hear. Christian's breastplate of righteousness. Look what Paul said. He said, what? listen to this. Fierce times shall come. Then he goes on to describe what fierce times look like. What do they look like, pastor? Well, listen up. Men shall be lovers of their own selves. Selfishness 
is at a height that we've never known before. It's even hard these days to find Southern hospitality. Men shall be lovers of their own selves. Why? Because they don't love Jesus. They will be covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. They despise you, per se. They dis they don't just don't like you. They despise you. They can't stand you. Fierce time. Yeah, in America. Christians, do you know what is going on in Iraq? Do you not know? That by the thousands, Christians are being martyred right now as we speak. As you sit here with all your nice, beautiful jewelry on, your nice shoes on, your nice clothes on, you got your hair do working, you all cologned and perfumed up. Your brothers and sisters in Christ on the other side of the world in a, an extremely hostile Muslim nation, they are beheading your brothers and sisters. And woe be unto you if you know that and you are not praying for them. Yes, we're in the evil day. We are in the evil day. This is it. This is it. Do you not know? See, we always look back on the first century church. We look back on how Peter was crucified upside down. Paul was beheaded. Isaiah was cut in half in a hollow log. The apostle John was boiled in oil but did not die. He survived it. The Apostle John died of old age. Of all the apostles, he was, it is believed he is the only one that did not suffer martyrdom. All the others were martyred for Christ. James was the first apostle to have his head taken. John the Baptist, his head was served on a silver platter. But everything is going to be all right. <laughs> ah, glory! Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Got to bring you back every once in a while. Despise it. They despise you, Christian. Listen, because they are traitors. They're heady. They're high-minded. They are lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. From such turn away. Watch this. They have a form of godliness. They have a form, but have not been transformed. Do you not know there are a lot of people, a lot of men and women, adults particularly, that are sitting in churches all over the world. They've got a form of godliness, but they have not yet been transformed. Do you know in the church at large, there's only a small percentage that are truly born again? 
But don't you let, don't you be in that number. You better make your calling and election sure today. I'm talking about sure, sure, sure. We need to sure it up. You need to know beyond the shadow of any doubt that when you take your last breath, your spirit is going to soar straight into the presence of God. And he will say, well done, my good and faithful servant. If you got an inkling of a doubt this morning, don't you leave out of these doors without making your calling and election sure. See, let me tell you something. I'm a saved pastor. I heard, I heard a pastor say, I don't even know if I'm saved or not. We're in the evil day, church. This is the evil day. Let me tell you something. There are many pastors. They're pastoring because mama said you should be a preacher. Because daddy said, boy, you need to be a preacher because God called me and I ran from the call, so you do it. Oh, man. The devil is a liar. There are a lot of pastors because they felt that would be a good vocation to go into. So they had the money to go to the best seminary that, that, that the land could offer and they got the education, but they were never born again. Didn't have no relationship with Jesus Christ. Had not repented of their sins. There's a lot of unregenerated preachers in the pulpit. They can't quote these scriptures the way you and me quote them. Because they don't have that much confidence in the word of God. So that's why some, many of them, they got a liberal theology. In other words, their theology is real loose. You know? They got on the belt of truth, but it's so loose, you can't even tell they got it on. <laughs> yeah, they sag. All right. I think I told this testimony in Bible study one day. I was in Oakland, California. I was at the BART station. There was a brother standing at the BART station in Oakland, California. His belt buckle was under his knees. I'm talking about his pants. The, be the pants were, were zipped, buckled, and the belt was on, but they were below his knees. With long underwear on. <laughs> now that is the epitome of stupidity. Amen. Okay. You got that right. <laughs> yeah. He did. It was extra long. <laughs> and plus they buy them real extra long t-shirts. You talk about you know the brain don't even compete. Is that what I just saw? Yeah. Lord knows I wanted to turn turn back and say, my brother, may I please take a picture of you? <laughs> right. Because I'm going to use you in an illustration one day. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power. 
They, the, the power is in being born again. The power is in the Holy Ghost. The power is in being filled with the Holy Ghost. The power is when you are fully dressed. Paul said, from those that just have a form of godliness but deny the power, he says, turn away from them. Turn away from them. See, see, this is why Job was such a model believer. He turned away from evil. See, the evil day comes in different shapes and sizes. The evil day comes in different forms and, and fashions. The, the, the evil day for you may be different from the evil day for me. But don't make no mistake. We're all, in general, living in the evil day. The evil day is here until Jesus comes back and sets up the kingdom of righteousness on the earth. So ain't no sense in wishing away the evil day. Because it just ain't happening. The devil is loose. He's on the prowl. Peter told you. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Job, see, sometimes evil comes in the form of your evil day will come in the form of temptation temptation to sin temptation to give in to your weaknesses temptation to throw in the towel and give up the evil day could be the day the doctor says You've got a terminal illness. The evil day can be when the stock market crashes and you lose all your money. Well, maybe for us it's the day when we get a pink slip. <laughs> and they say you ain't got no job no more. And it's hard to find another one. Maybe your evil day is when some God forbidden thing happens to one of your children. The evil day. The evil day. It comes in all shapes and sizes. All forms. When Joseph was tempted by his servant's wife, his master's wife, excuse me. He did what the New Testament said. He fleed fornication. Isn't that something? Job didn't even have the New Testament. But he already knew what to do. That lets us know you don't always have to be able to quote Chapter and verse. Just do what you know is right down in your Holy Ghost. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. You know what's right to do. My goodness, help me, Jesus. The Bible says, Joseph turned away from evil and left his coat in her hand. See, some of us ain't willing to lose your sport jacket. I paid too much money for this jacket. I got this jacket in Los Angeles. 
Ain't no telling how long before I get back over there. Sometimes in order to do what is right, you may have to lose something. Yeah. You want to go sell all of that stuff that got you in trouble. God is saying you need to throw it away. The Bible says in the New Testament they brought all their curious books, all of their books of enchantments and all of their, all of their sorceries and all of their witchcraft and they burned it. Goodness. Mm. Even the New Testament, Joseph turned away from Mary, his fiance, until God spoke to him in a dream. God had to turn that brother around. Joseph said, No, I ain't, I, I, I ain't got no part in that. Mm -mm. I know that ain't mine. Y'all ain't talking to me. <laughs> Joseph said, I know that ain't my child. <laughs> See, Christian singles, that's why it's good. Even if you're dating, you remain celibate. You keep yourself pure. And holy. <laughs> Did if somebody come up pregnant or if somebody have you know that ain't mine. <laughs> Watch this. Watch this. The evil day came for the Jews when Paul and Barnabas turned away from them and they said, We wash our hands, we shake the dust, we turn to the Gentiles. Because the Jews didn't want to hear the gospel. Look what else Paul said. Let me move this message along. It's time to shut this down. Paul said this in, in 1 Timothy chapter 4. He says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Don't you know that's the day that we live right now? Do you not understand and know that there are seducing spirits and doctrines of devils going on out here? Look what else he said. He said, they are speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. The evil day is here, brethren. 
we're living in it. But Jesus said, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Everything is going to be all right. Oh, yeah. Jesus said, I, I told you this so that you will have peace. The pastor is telling you this today so that you will have peace. And in the world you shall have tribulation. That was a promise from the Lord. In the world. Are we in the world? Yes. In the world we shall have tribulation. What is tribulation? It's pressure. It's pressure. In the world, the pressure, there will be pressure upon your life, pressure upon your mind, pressure upon your spirit, pressure from the enemy, pressure from the world, pressure from your own flesh. Yeah, your own flesh will pressure you not to pray. Your flesh will tell you, too tired to pray tonight. And then before you know it, you in such a habit of not praying at night before you go to bed, your flesh don't even have to say nothing. Your flesh be like, now you know what we're going to do, right? We're going to hit this pillar and go to sleep. And you ain't saying nothing to God, okay? Who's quiet up in here? Ooh. 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 We must have struck a chord. Just, 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 just say ouch. Amen. Jesus said, but be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. Everything is going to be all right. I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Well, having done all to stand, I close with this last phrase of verse 13. Having done all to stand. Have you done everything that you know to do to stand? See, that, see, that's why so many Christians are not standing. Because they haven't done everything they know to do to stand. Paul says here, having done all to stand. Ah, yeah, see, 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 see. We want everything to be all right without doing all that we know to do to stay. No, God is calling us to do all that we know to everything that you know to do in order to stay. Everything the Word of God has instructed you to do in order to stay. Have you really prayed in order to stand? I mean, have you really prayed with prayer? Or did you just pray? You know, there's a difference between saying a prayer and being in prayer. <laughs> when you're just saying a prayer, all you're interested in is getting your message to God and shut it down and go on about your own business. But when you are in prayer, you are in twofold communication with God. You're talking to Him, but He's talking to you. And even if He is silent, you're listening. <laughs> Have you really prayed? 
with prayer, earnest prayer? Have you fasted and prayed with prayer? Mm. Yeah, see, we, 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 we want everything to be all right. We want that breakthrough. We want the windows of heaven to open, but we haven't done everything we know to do. Have you sought counsel? Or you just think you know everything you need to do? Yeah, well, well, why don't you just sit down and take a serious look at where you have gotten yourself today? And if the truth be told, you know you are not where you really want to be. Amen. Amen. Even if you do have some quote-unquote success in your life. Yes, oh, help us, Jesus. Have you built yourself up on the Word of God? Good. Listen to what the Word of God says. But you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. June 20. Let the Word of Christ dwell in you. Richly. Or do you just have a little dab or do you? He said, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Listen, yeah, I, you, you ain't going to get this overnight, but you can get it. It's, this thing is doable, but you are going to have to give of yourself. You're going to have to do everything you know to do in order for the word of Christ to dwell in you richly. See, you, you want to know when the word of Christ is dwelling in you richly? When it's coming back out of you. When it's dwelling in you richly, it's like the psalmist said, my cup runneth over. <laughs> you got enough for yourself and for somebody else. When all the word you got is for you and you ain't got nothing to share with nobody else, you ain't rich yet. Oh, look out here. You ain't rich yet. I heard that, Pastor. Amen. <laughs> Pastor put the emphasis on yet. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Because you go, you can get it. You can have it. Listen. Just you just need to spend quality time with right. God. That's right. Amen. God ain't asking you to give him 23 out of 24 hours in the day. But just give him quality time out of those 24 hours. Amen. Do you have to sleep 13 hours? <laughs> oh, Lord, well, you know I was real tired last night. Well, it looked like you've been real tired for a few months now. 